Hi everyone, Jade here from Jade Productions, back with another video, and I am here to talk about the brand new Dominion box and Age of Sigma 3rd edition that was just unveiled uh, in the uh, preview last night. And the article is up. I watched it live at the time, but it happens at like 3 a.m. Australian time, and no way in hell with my retarded sleep schedule am I going to do a live video reaction to that. So, as we get straight to it, uh, let's begin by taking a look at what was unveiled. First off, we got a look with a nice, uh, lovely cinematic trailer, which was uh, kind of a cool uh, 3D thing, showed us a lot of stuff, gave a bit of a pseudo recap for people familiar with Age of Sigma, and moved into what is um, the box itself, and that's where we come down to our first thing about what is in the box, and we get to see all these different models. And uh, joining me today as we look through and go through uh, this latest sort of uh, release is a friend of mine, Haruka Junko. Hey everyone, I'm Haruka Junko. I tabletop with this guy, tabletop game with this guy, but uh, I know nothing of Age of Sigmar and will be here as an outside viewer looking in. Yeah, so you are kind of the intended target for for this as it's a box trying to bring in new players as they do with a refined Age of Sigma um, that's meant to have a broader appeal a lot like 9th edition with the increased balance and the emphasis on like new shit and bringing people in with a overall more accessible Age of Sigma just like they did with 40k. Um, and so, first things first, uh, breaking down what we see in this box set. Um, as far as, like, a starter box... Well, first off, uh, that's a lot of models. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, uh, 50 models. Yeah, so that's 50 no. models in there. Uh, and we've got a bit of a breakdown of what exactly is in here. We've got um, our guy with banner. We've got three of the elite guys. We'll get into what each of these are in particular. Uh, there's a lot of heroes on both sides. Um, there's a lot of parallels between this and the Indomitus box for 40k 9th edition, which, um, that's exactly what this box is, um, everyone, and I actually really, really fucking hate that. Um, because that box was a travesty, and it led into a lot of the clusterfuck that is 9th edition. Now, that box isn't to blame for 9th edition's problems. 9th edition isn't even, isn't even to blame for 9th edition's problems. It's Games Workshop that is to blame. Because this will once again be a ludicrously expensive box that is jacked up by a good 60% here in Australia and will be limited stock and will likely be sold out within minutes, if not seconds, and require you to then go to scalpers once again. And then in about four to five months, like we're currently seeing now, you will undoubtedly see every single one of these models in bundles available on eBay being sold at cheap prices because this yeah, is a limited production they did confirm that in the stream which their business practices are they say they've made enough of these um but the fact that it's a starter box with a limited production is gosh awful so what they're probably going to do is um particularly junko what they did with ninth edition because that seems to be what their format is they're trying to break down and copy what was successful and I say successful with hyphenated finger marks, um, they're probably going to break down this box into smaller chunks that they sell over time as, like, different levels of starter boxes. But this full set will never probably be available again once this box is gone. Well, it never will. Yeah. Be. Like, I'm, I'm looking over it, and from what I can see, and we'll get into the models and stuff, it, most of it looks pretty nice, and... You told me before we actually started this that these are all new models, which for someone getting in to get, you know, some of the newer, cooler looking models is awesome. But at the same time, did they hint at any sort of price for this stuff? Um, they did. Their hint was that it would be around the price of the Indomitus box, not the exact match is their words um, in quote marks I actually have um, in my notes. Um, so in that regard, oh geez, Indomitus was somewhere in the 300 plus Australian. I want to say it was somewhere around three. Oh Jesus! Actually, let me really quickly look this up. <laughs> I can pull it up on Amazon. It's about 256 American for me from Games Workshop on Amazon. Yep. 
Yeah, so, uh, not really sure how expensive that is, um, American-wise. Well, that, that is American. In economies. But that's, I mean, the, the, that's entire week's paycheck for me. That's, that's, combine good games. And, of course, you know, that's not including, like, that that's just what comes with the box, which well it does well everything does look complete and in the box from what I can see for like the Adominus box. That's that's still you know two two hundred and fifty something dollars plus tax, so probably closer to three hundred. And in the Adominus box, how many points was that? Uh the Indominus box, ah, uh, jeez, I couldn't really even tell you at this point. I remember the Indominus being somewhere in the 320 plus mark um, for Australia. I want to say 360. I remember it was bloody expensive. Um, it's at least 300 plus. Um, and the points wise that you got in it, 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 it was also a similar box with a lot of different models, um, most mm -hmm. of which were characters, which. Um, Games Workshop tends to be really fickle on the pricing with characters. Some characters will set you back $80 for a single, like, captain. Other times, and it tends to be fairer in Age of Sigma, sometimes it's about 40 to 50 This is all AUD, so take off about 10 to 20 bucks on each of these prices for, for you, for US. Okay, so I'm, I actually just pulled this up. So for the Dominus box... This was about 10 months ago, so it's not including any new changes that have happened across 10 months, which... Yeah, there's some. Uh, yeah. Um, apparently, it's about nine... About a thousand for both, uh, give or, uh, with a difference of five points total. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, which, it, I mean, that's not even, like, a standard size army, from what I understand. Since standard size is, like, 2,000. Oh, you can... Played a bunch of different points levels. Um, I would tell you that ninth edition is actually best played at a thousand to fifteen hundred anymore. Um, two thousand point games in ages in uh forty k ninth edition are a travesty. But this is not to rail on about ninth edition, everyone. This yeah. is about Age of Sigma. But um, so looking at that and looking at this, assuming this is going to be somewhat close, that's still nearly three hundred bucks for. And so for Age of Sigmar, is a thousand points or something, or whatever the equivalent would be for that. Is that a lot for an Age of Sigmar army? Um, this would be a good solid base for Age of Sigmar armies. It's pretty equivalent. Um, Age of Sigmar um, typically is played at 2,000 points. Um, at, a th at the lower points levels, Age of Sigmar tends to be... Um, it's really a weird mixed bag uh, with the lower points levels in, of Age of Sigma, where some factions perform super well, and other factions don't. Which is why um, I've never really played a lot of games outside of 2,000 points because of that. Because um, you have a lot of things where, in Age of Sigma, things just tend to cost more points. Okay, so assuming that this is still, you know, another box that's going to be around 300 bucks with about a thousand points per army if this reddit post is to bleed for the you know indominus box if it's around there it sounds about right. still, you will still be about you'll still need about a thousand points of models and stuff which is yeah I mean, now what, another 200 bucks um it really depends um you can build stuff on a budget a lot better in age of sigma so if you're talking about this oh. as a starter box um, I think this is a good starter box for the Orc side. For the Stormcast side, I can't comment because Stormcast are in a bad place right now. They need a new battle tome, and I'm going to guess, based on the patterns of Age of Sigma, that there's only one battle line unit in the Stormcast side, and at the 1,000 point mark, you need uh, two battle line. And I'm assuming that's, like, battle lines or, like, your troop Yeah, they're choices. your basic troops choice, where they're your mandatory units that you have to have. They're your they're your core infantry blocks. Okay, so... It, so you'd still need an extra choice, then. But 
Yeah, now, it's, it's, um, it looks like there's only one in here. It could be the fact that, uh, the spear guys, which we'll get into as we go down, come in units of five, because, um, really weird thing about the Stormcast is they're very, um, Space marine even though their faction needs to not be, in order to actually be competitive. Um, most of their units come in blocks of threes, minimum, minimum unit sizes of three or five. All right. Uh, whereas the orcs here, we can obviously make out that, yeah, there's a lot of hobgoblins, there's one group of boys, but both sides have an abundance of characters, which is both something I do and don't like about this box. But I want to point out, though, that for a big starter box like this, it's just rules and models. There is no, um, there's no dice, no tape measuring stuff. You just get the rule book. So if you're just getting into Age of Sigma... I actually don't recommend this box, just flat out. If you're here to know whether or not you should get into Age of Sigma by buying this box, don't. Yeah, like, from what I'm seeing here, and like I said before, I have never played a single match of Age of Sigma. I am, I have played maybe three total games of 40k, and not even with my own models, I don't own any. I'm just looking at this, and... The plastic crack meme comes to eye, comes to mind. This seems a little pricey for what you're getting. Yeah, 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 and um, it's part of Games Workshop's uh, business model to really produce these big, elaborate, expensive boxes, keep everything in here exclusive and limited time, and then uh, typically factions that go into starter boxes like this. Um, if we look at the Night Haunt, for example who were the release faction last time in Age of Sigma 2.0 in the Soul Wars box. Um, they're a faction that are... they're okay, but they're ludicrously hard to collect because a lot of their really important models only come in starter boxes that have been broken down in, in their version of the Age of Sigma 2.0 version of this Dominion box, which was Soul Wars, and its subsequent, like, smaller variants. So is that another worry that's coming with this box? Is that the new updates for these two sub so for the orc sub faction, the cruel boys, and the uh, stormcast these stormcast eternals? Is that a worry in your mind that some of these characters are going to be needed? Absolutely. Um, it's a it's a huge worry in my mind, having seen it with um Age of Sigma 2.0, and with the Nighthaunt. The Nighthaunt, uh, there's really no efficient way to collect them. Like, if you're if you're on a budget, Age of Sigmar is great, because typically you get a lot more um, value for your cost, uh, for the amount of money you're spending. But when it comes to getting really important models that you need for your army, you're really restricted in how you get it, and you have to end up paying ridiculous amounts to get stuff you don't need on top of it. And my immediate thought would be, if... And this is one of the reasons why I immediately with my partner T um, on the channel uh, when we were talking after I watched I was like immediately, I want these uh, cruel boys. I want this to be my destruction faction because I love mocking orcs. And uh, we knew the moment because they said limited release, we're going to have to jump on this. So we're going to split the box. Um, and it's one of those things of it's really the only efficient way to get anything out of this box is to try and split it. Yeah, so that, that that's definitely a worry for me. And then for new people trying to get in, like wanting to play the Cruel Boys or uh, the Stormcast Eternals, if they do, when they do get their new, uh, what would you call it, War Tone? Uh, uh, Battle Tones, codex. yeah. That, that's the Codex? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that these characters might become needed for the armies. Yeah, my but, concern is that they, they stay kind of hard to get your hands on because of whatever boxes follow. Dominion, since Dominion is going to be limited release, it's only going to appear in those now. And it, it takes a while for Games Workshop to release this stuff individually, and there's some shit that's just never been released individually, or it takes ridiculous turnover time so that they can scalp more money out of these ridiculous boxes. And they tend to do that more with Age of Sigma. I remember we um, there was a box set release uh, quite a while ago, where or almost two years ago, three years ago now at this point actually, in 2021, where there was a box that came out with um, a Skaven character and a Flesh Eater Quartz character, 
and they remained exclusive, and you weren't able to get them individually for a good year and a half. That's not exactly great. No, Games Workshop has a terrible problem with their exclusive models. But let's dive into now the models that we see in the box and go into what uh, we think of them. Um, We've seen uh, Yendrasta, the Celestial Spear, kind of our centerpiece Stormcast Eternals uh, unit for this, a named character. Um, I have a different... I have a definite um deference to to um named characters in age of sigma and 40k i don't like them whatsoever but um i think this model is amazing except for the fact of that hell is with that haircut <laughs> yeah no i'm not exactly this is something that's prevalent with a couple of the other models later on just the faces and hair don't really look that great um, yeah, um, what, Games Workshop what, really what struggles with uh, doing female faces. Yeah, like, I get that they're supposed to be female warriors and that stuff, but, I mean, I I, I get it, but some of these faces kind of just look straight ugly. Like, she flew through the ugly forest and didn't come out the other side. Yeah, um... I, I, I don't know uh, what what they're exactly thinking. Um, it's a, one of those things of I've I've heard people say that this is one of the better female sculpts, and I am inclined to agree. If that gives you any sort of um, that's pretty bad. But one thing I'm actually wondering is the the whole model here since it comes with like since it looks like it comes with like these stairs and stuff she's supposed to stand on. Yeah, this is a whole scenic base. This is the whole model. Which, everything. by the way, that, that's pretty cool that they're giving that, that they're you know, helping with scenic bases for new players for something like this for a named character. Yeah, um, um I, I dislike the I dislike the whole sitting on top of a rock thing. It's something they do all the time, but uh, in this case, it's not bad because those wings would get in the way when you're playing. Mm -hmm. Look at how wide those wings come out. But also, yeah. um, it's better that she's standing there on the scenic base. It's better for everyone that she's like that, um, new and veteran players, simply because Games Workshop's flying stands, as someone who owns a Caradron army, um, their flying stems are shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one thing I'm definitely wondering is, like, how easy is, would that be to put together? Would or is that just whole base already put together? And you just... uh, that'll Ooh, probably be a couple it. of things. They did crack it open on stream, and they did say that this entire kit of this box is push to fit, which means okay. technically you don't need glue, but you should always use glue, because the last thing they said was only push to fit, which was uh, Cursed City. Holy shit, they designed those... The people who designed those models were fucking madmen. Like, I... I... I tried to push to fit a few of them, and I was like, holy shit, this cannot be done without glue. <laughs> you're worried you're going to break it in half. Some of these things are just like, how are you going to sit in there long enough while I push to fit this other thing in that has to push to fit in around that so I can push to fit you in so you don't move anymore? Yes, yes, yes. But um, she's, she's pretty cool, other than the haircut. Uh, I'll probably be doing a head swap on that if... Or, well... I won't be. I'm taking the orc, so whatever T decides to do with those, I suppose. Um, but we then got the Lord Imperitant with Griffhound. I adore this model. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, out of all the models we I was scrolling through so far, this is the one model that is just pure awesome. Yeah, the the head is great. The help, the helmet is great. He's got the kind of Caradron iron uh, like beard done into his thing mm -hmm. he's got uh the, i love griff hounds in general i love the griffs just super a lot um yeah I, I do find it a little funny that he's probably wearing that griff hounds mom on his shoulders <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that just seems like a little questionable kind of choice there but you know welcome I'm, to the age of sigma <laughs> i i can't you know say my fashion does not include griff hounds so you know maybe that's you know helps you command them mm -hmm. I'd like to point out that, according to the description, that this is a strategist. So this dude is supposed to be your, like, Sun Tzu, Zhuge Liang kind of dude. 
Uh, this, um, is, this is your guy who sits in the back of your army, handing out buffs and generating command points, probably. Why does he look so... I think this just cements that, you know, strategists generally look cooler than everyone else. Of course. <laughs> Which, it's absolutely hilarious, I find, but, you know... Yeah, so uh, there's not a lot really to say on this model, and other than the fact that I think it looks really rad. Um, yeah, and... no, definitely the problem is, um, and we'll discuss this a little bit as we get to the bottom of and finish looking over these Stormcast models just very quickly as we just sort of skirt through them. Uh, we've got the Knight Arcanum, which is kind of like a lower level wizard. Um, we, we have map, Lord though. Arcanums currently in uh, the Stormcast army, which are like your, your level 2 wizards. They're your higher level Lord wizards. Um, your Knight Arcanums uh, technically already exist, but they're really hard to get modeled. So this is another sculpt for it. Um, I hate the mask. Um, I'd say leave the mask on, because then you can at least say, oh man, it's Vega from Street Fighter. <laughs> I hate the mask. <laughs> I, I kind of hate the face more. I don't know, I'll take the face. Um, the rest of this model I think looks uh, good, and it's a another way to get your hands on a Knight Arcanum, another low-level wizard, um, which is nice. Um, then we've got the Knight Vexilor, which is an existing model that already exists. We already have we already have Knight Vexilors, so this is a Knight Vexilor with a different banner. Um, I, I mean, I guess is this this is a very important banner. Um, it's hard to really say. The power that radiates from them fortifies all those that fight nearby. So it's probably... like A lot of banners tend to give, like, defensive buffs. Banners tend to, to be kind of important. Most factions have a banner unit, which is tends to be, like, super important as a hero, Um, which I guess harkens back to a bit of uh, Warhammer Fantasy, which I know you're, like, zero familiarity with the old Warhammer Fantasy tabletop. No idea. But well, back um, then... I, I... I yeah. do know the Warhammer Fantasy R or tabletop RPG a little bit. Second edition of that. Yeah. Um. But which definitely helped. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But um, back in Warhammer Fantasy, there was a huge emphasis on every army basically had to have a battle standard bearer. So there, your army had to have in in eighth edition Warhammer Fantasy was where's your guy with the banner? You don't have one. You're playing the game wrong. And yeah, a lot but... of a lot of factions still share that. Okay, we have a guy with a banner who's pretty important. Um, no idea what this guy does yet, but banners tend to be pretty strong. I'm gonna make a wild guess here with no actual knowledge of uh, Age of Sigmar. It's gonna give uh, either plus one armor saves or an invul save. Yeah, I'm willing to bet it gives ignore damage or ignores render something. It says. It seems defensive in mind, mostly because uh, lore-wise, what the uh, what the apotheosis anvil is. Um, but then we've got praetors. Yeah, these dudes look pretty okay. You know, they're not the coolest out of the bunch. And someone looks okay. Yeah, that that dude's like drawing a sword out of his sheath. But you know, they they look okay. I I see these, and for some strange reason, I immediately think, ah, yes. I do love Harganeth Executioners and uh, Black Guard and Phoenix Guard. Hmm, hmm. Those were words. <laughs> uh, it just got me thinking. It just got me thinking of like the old halberd wielding like um, elite guard units from the Dark Elves and um, High ah. Elves of old fantasy. Something about uh, elite units always seem to be wielding halberds, apparently. So you know. Um, but, but yeah, uh, um, <laughs> these look definitely uh, interesting, at least. I like them. I like the new... They, they've done a lot with the, the armor to change it up a little bit, to be a little less, a little bit less, like, automata, like... They just look like robots or space marines wearing big pauldron armor. I, I like this yeah, plate armor design. That was, uh, that was something a lot of people were uh, <clears throat> making fun of them for, because they were just like, ah, yes... The Ultramarines went back in time. Yeah. Um, but I really like these. They come in a unit of three, and apparently they, um, according to what was discussed in the preview, they attach to your hero to form a retinue. Um, so, okay, that's cool. 
And if it's any, um, hmm, we'll see how that goes. Um, bodyguard units tend to, I, they, they tend to be useful in some way or another. It depends on how their bodyguard rule actually shapes out. Um, then we've got the Annihilators, who are a new kind of paladin. So uh, the Stormcast are broken up into several different ranks. So the paladins mm. are your, like, elite guys. Um, and these are a defensive paladin, which I guess the Stormcast didn't have enough paladins because now they have shooty paladins, now they have um, monster hunting paladins. spear paladins, they have infantry killing axe paladins... They have elite infantry mashing hammer paladins, and now they have paladins, paladins with the paladins. thunder hammer and the thunder shield. Yeah, now they have thunder hammer storm shield paladins. <laughs> you know, I guess I, I mean, I assume these guys are probably going to be like your now uh, like charge them with the force of the meteor. I'm guessing you're supposed to just charge these dudes in, and just they won't die. Yeah. Yeah, from what was discussed in the preview, they are, um, they deal mortal wounds on the charge, they are quite defensive with their buffs and their shields, they're, they're quite defensively strong, um, which I'll let you sink in that under normal circumstances, the Stormcast are considered defensively strong already. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, when people say something's defensively strong in a defensively strong armor, I'm just like, okay, and... It's yeah. less like I get it. These guys are probably going to be even harder to kill. Um, I don't know from um, random Let's... numbers, three up in false save. It's Age of Sigma, um, so everything tends to die super fast anyway. Like when everything hits and wounds on flat numbers, and there's lots of multiple damage going around, um, shit just dies. Like it's battle battles are bloodbaths. It's not like um, current ninth edition. 40k where I can shoot you with a shit ton of stuff and after all is said and done you've lost one Necron and then he stands back up oh that's after the other Necrons have stood back up that I killed oh well yeah but you know um yeah so they're another new paladin um so they're kind of cool I guess <laughs> yeah um, they're, then... they're, they at least look nice and fairly interesting like one thing that we can't, that I definitely say that about these models is um, all of them do have a really good attention to detail, it seems. Yeah, I, I will note that these guys are woefully, like, they're thick. Their armor, their yeah. armor's probably too thick. I actually kind of hate that about them, but... They do it, kind of there, look there's like no... a Fire Emblem General, you know? Yeah, Fire Emblem Generals. Um, yeah, when the front is actually just a shield. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's one of those things of... They... They're not Space Marines, everyone. It's, 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 they're, they're lightning-powered demigod human heroes from the past resurrected with lightning magic. Like, uh, So they're Thunder Warriors. Shut up, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so... They're okay. They're probably my least favorite. As we get towards the end of this, we were hit only with the uh, Vindicators, or Vindi... Vindictors. Vindictors, okay. Which are just spear infantry. Yeah, they got a shield, they got a spear. Um, I'm starting to come to the realization of, uh, why is everyone old? Hmm. Like, like, every single one of these people looks like they're in, like, their early 50s. I don't know. Outside of like the Knight Arcanum and um, the Yindrasta, though Yindrasta looks like a Karen, to be honest. <laughs> so does the Knight Arcanum. So <laughs> I'd like to see your war boss. Oh God, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm gonna go I... back through this video and 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 just uh, take that as a soundbite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, man. I've. I've ruined a named character for everyone because that's all I can see in that one. It's okay. I think we're all thinking it. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, these, look, these people, guys people age okay. like, um, what, what do you say? People age like milk <laughs> in yeah. Age of Sigma? Yeah, they, 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 I don't know what that was me with someone else, but yeah, no, they, they seem to definitely age like, uh, age like milk, you know? 
week or two, they're pretty good. After that, um, probably don't drink it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the spear infantry brings up the main core of the battle line section for the stormcast into... Um, let's see. So they now have your basic infantry who can have hammers or shield or hammers and swords with shields or you wield your hammers or swords if you want to be edgy. Um, you've got, uh, basic archers. You've got guys with mauls who can also cast magic. Um, and you've got, uh, ranger guys with cross bolt pistols and axes. And now you've got spear guys. None of which you can field in a decent blob to actually make your army look like a nice, cool formation of an army. Instead, most of these you have to field MSU, because Stormcast are way too expensive points-wise for what they do currently. Hopefully that gets fixed. But, um, the yeah. problem I see with this, and this is my immediate thoughts going into this box, um, it adds a whole bunch of new characters. Some of which are mostly just uh, alternate sculpts or ca existing characters with different stuff. Problem is, um, the Stormcast are already one of the largest ranges of uh, models in the entire Age of Sigmar. They've got some forty plus different models, and this was gonna this is makes it even more. And to be honest, not a lot of those are useful, and most of them are characters. Yeah, I'm kind of looking over these, and I'm just kind of like... Like, the models do look great and stuff, but if what you're saying is that this entire box is new models and stuff, and to be honest, I feel like they should give them an indication, of, a little more indication of, like, hey, this is what they're going to do, which, I mean, they might be doing that. I've... Yeah, they'll they'll they'll, they'll yeah, show us people. bits and pieces of that in the in the future, and um, all their unit rules get made available free once the models are actually out and published, which is at least the nice thing of Age of Sigma compared to to 40k. It's it's the modern game, funnily enough. Yeah, at the same time, I probably this is me coming from the outside once again. Um kind of wish that they'd put out the stats and stuff early so people can go, man, I want that, or dear god, why? Yeah, but, again, this is a problem with their their thing. They're not they're not thinking in 5D. They're not even thinking in modern economics. They're thinking, make an exclusive product, fill it with new plastic crack that looks really awesome, jack up the price to far beyond what we need to pay off the molds, that it costs to make these in the factories, so that by the time we run out of these, which we'll run out of them super quick, we'll have made not only our back all our money with the profit, we'll have made a ludicrous amount of profit. Because I wanna, I wanna remind you, you might not be aware of this, but the audience as well, um, guys, 2020 was one of their most profitable years. <laughs> Their, their, this business model that they started in 2019, which is basically just price gouging, continues to make them ludicrous amounts of money. That's how much overpriced their, their stuff is. You think but, that some people would be less likely to buy this stuff then? Yeah. But, moving on, we then got the Cruel Boys. Or the Cool Boys. Um, Swamp Orcs. They are a new addition to the Auric War Clans, so uh, I that's great, which probably means we're getting another Auric War Clan um, box, uh, sorry, Battle Tome, which will update to include this. They did mention that, yes, we're going to be able to mix and match, so uh, probably our first two Codex uh, Battle Tomes after um, this box set comes out will be Stormcast and Auric War Clans for 3.0, which is nice. Um, I like the idea of the fact that um, currently with Auric War Clans, you can play things as, like, Iron Jaws, which are your hard-hitting heavy armored orcs. You can play them as your Feral Orcs, your Bone Splitters, or you can play them all together in a mixed uh, Grand War. And so this will add another thing on top of that. And I both do and do not like the shared battle tomes. 
but at the same time, it's good for certain factions like Orcs and Destruction factions where they often don't have a lot of models, and I'm actually willing to bet that what we see here is probably the limit of what this faction actually is. Yeah. Um, there might be I, I one would... or two more things to come afterwards, maybe like some knobs or something, but I'm pretty sure what we see here is what is what this army is um, for its own individual side without mixing other orcs. Yeah, I, I have to admit, kind of looking at these guys, um, all I can think of is meats back on the menu because uh, all of them kind of look like they... They, they look like they're Lord of the Rings orcs who stepped onto the wrong set. I both... I agree. <laughs> and I both... I love that. <laughs> I love that about them. Um, I may or may not, you know, be able to look to my left here of my screen and see a massive uh, Lord of the Rings army, also produced. Well, hey, you've got extra models army. you can use. <laughs> I'm afraid they're but, uh, out of scale, unfortunately, and most of them are metal, and I never want to paint a metal model again in my life. Yeah, now I have to admit, looking at these, um, like especially this, like first, like scenic picture that they have here um i'm not really a huge fan i prefer orcs big and meaty and you know th these boys look pretty skinny yeah no i i can kind of see that i i guess they just don't have a big enough diet or they're just not they're just not weightlifting enough i guess like the iron jaws are um well yeah. It, uh, uh, I, I tell you what, you actually before. have brought it to my attention because I've just noticed this. Because I've been painting a lot of orcs and um, savage orcs as well tend to be really beefy. I have just noticed, like, if we go down to this first model, the killer boss, um, on the like hell is this? One. The hell is this thing called? Nash tooth. Great Nash tooth. I love the Nash tooth, but you've just pointed something, pointed something at me. If you look at his arm holding the spear, it's a really skinny arm. <laughs> Yeah, what a but really problem, giant yeah. leg that he's got. Well, the thing is, is that look is if you look at him and you look at some of the other ones, they're rather muscular. Like, uh, especially down at like the killer boss with the stab bra. Which it might be my favorite model. Yeah, well, like all of these orcs, they don't look like they're suffering from you know not eating enough, uh, and especially in an environment like a swamp where. Getting around rather tough, especially if they're trying to be sneaky, so they're either swimming or blending into the terrain predator style, depending on how they want to word it. Um, for that, for that, that, uh, that, 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 that makes sense, because if you have a large body with muscles, that's extra weight, and guess what's going to happen if you're going to be in a swamp and you're going to weigh a lot? Yeah, but at the same time, muscles develop rather naturally, even while swimming and stuff. So, th these are unusually skinny for orcs who are sneaking around, swimming, and then proceeding to murder um, space marines. Uh, Stormcast, but <laughs> space marines. Oh, shush. Um, I will say this: I I like these models more than I like the um I like these models more than I like the Stormcast ones. Like, I'll say that. Uh, They're I... you, you go ahead and explain your reasoning. I, I've been talking a lot. So for me in the Age of Sigmar, it's the step away from what has been established to see new and different takes. So I like these guys just for that very different aesthetic. They're, they're different to what we've seen before um, with the current existing orc factions that we have. Because right now we literally have big heavy armored orcs or we have naked orcs. We have no in-between. And the poses of these models, their designs... I mean, I hate all their shields because it's Kragnos, but sure, whatever... Um, I like that in between of they're not completely stupid and feral. I like that they've got a huge mixture of different textures and 
stuff. I'm a huge fan of swamps in general um, and swamp themed stuff. I think they fit right at home with the Veiled Coast, which is where all the Age of Sigma stuff happens in um, Jade Productions in our um, sort of little narrative universe that we have our armies uh, fight in and run the tabletop RPG in. Um, I love, on this Nash Tooth, I love the Nash Tooth itself. Um, the Naked Mole Rat is... The Naked Mole Rat wolf thing is amazing. So this is an example of, on this one, I think the mount outshines the particular guy on top with his skinny little arms and disproportionate legs. Which He might be the worst orc, but I think it's a really cool model. And as we go down, we get into the, the Shaman, which the Shaman makes me immediately think, unfortunately, as much as I hate it, it does remind me a lot of World of Warcraft. And that's actually something I want to point out just a little bit. Um, the faces on these, the way they're all kind of slicked back and skinnier. Um, like, these are, these are certainly, like, mutant orcs, a new species of mutant orc, all of them. Um, because they don't really share that traditional orc bone structure in their faces. Um, but this guy certainly makes me think, uh, I love Swamp Magicians, I love Orc Magic Casters, they tend to look great. I love this model, but I just can't help but think, this guy's come straight out of Azeroth. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I, I looked at his name and I almost, and I thought it said Swamp Capella, Swamp Capella but like uh, acapella music. Yeah, I and might I have thinking, uh, been wow, slightly man, dyslexic gonna... and read it like that as well. <laughs> so I was like, oh, he's gonna sing to us. But, uh, I mean, it's definitely a cool model. I definitely do like the elixir or whatever that he is, you know, turning into, like, smoke as he drops it, which is kind of a cool effect. It's, uh, that's um, actually one of the things I hate popular. the most, um, actually. Oh? Yeah, uh, these kind of swirly effects that Games Workshop does on a few of their models like this. Um, there's a lot of, like, weird plastic lightning shit that they do. Weird, like, it's just plastic shit that they've just onto yeah. the sculpt. I really hate that the most. Um, I would prefer if it stopped like about halfway up where it starts to turn into smoke. Mm -hmm. At, and the same with the pot goblin, how it starts to f go out of the pot. Um, speaking of which, the pot grot. Um, not what I thought of when I immediately read the name. <laughs> yeah. Um, wh one thing I definitely... It also oh. took me a few times to work out, everyone, that got, that grot is not inside the pot. He is behind it, stirring it. You can see sure his legs. <laughs> oh. Well, one thing I do worry about is that, I, I do hope is that, that uh, their bits and pieces aren't hanging out too far over. Hope yeah, that, this is like, a huge his annoyance. Back might be um, a little bit, um, his okay. back might be get a little hard to get into places, and especially the uh, uh, Swamp Kaba uh shaman like how tall his his uh staff is yeah that's always a problem when it comes to these things because um in age of sigma you got to be half an inch um to um you know be able to well sorry everything has different ranges so you've got like one inch range weapons two inch range weapons and that's this can affect your pile and how close your models have to go and you've got to be within three inches to actually be in a combat with each other you got to end your charges within um, half an inch as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, basically compared to 40k, you could be a lot closer when you do your charges. Um, and in exchange, you can pile in around stuff while being in base contact. And part of the problem is a lot of models get really stuck on each other a lot. Um, a good example is, um, and it, it's a good concern that you bring up, because um, I immediately think of it when I go to... Um, this guy up here with the Nash Tooth, um, yeah. I can see it actually looks like they've tried to address the problem a little bit by putting him a little bit further back on his base, raising his rear with a tactical rock, which I hate the rock poses, but, you know, um, I prefer him to be flat on the ground. Uh, but it, it is a problem that it comes up a lot in Age of Sigmar with a lot of monsters and a lot of models, because you have things with... Um, you've got pterodons with huge wings, tiny bases. You that just get all over the place. You've got giant ogre um, monsters with giant horns that come out like a good three, to two, uh, good two inches in front of them, which 
um, means a lot of times when you charge them in, it kind of ruins your immersion because you have to flip them and charge them in ass forward. So they're not yeah, they're just going for uh, they're just going for a peach bomber, man. Makes sense. Yeah. But uh, the one thing I do worry about with the killer boss in that regard is that his spear and like the stuff coming off his back does hang out a little bit. Well, the spear it looks like it hangs out quite a bit if you look at that second picture with the shield forward. Yeah. So that'll be something we got to worry about. But hopefully, he's far enough back on it. Um, yeah. considering it's an oval base, it should be a little better. Cavalry tend to, on the oval bases, not get so much stuck with each other, just because they tend to be a little skinnier, and they're also deceptively wide, those oval bases. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, I think the next thing we got up is the, uh, killer boss and the stab grot? Yep. Yeah, uh, so that stab, that stab grot, I want, uh, 50 of them for my 40k orcs. And I want to put one as my war boss. Um, I want two of these killer bosses. One with the axe. One with the giant uh, nope's uh, nope nope ball on a on a stick. Yeah, yeah. The little, little stab guards. Are you not entertained? Oh god. Oh god. That's great. Um, that's what it looks like. No, and now I cannot... I, I wasn't even thinking that before, and now I can't help but think of that. Um, I do love that this uh, orc army has grots with it, um, because so far in Age of Sigmar we've seen grots separated on their own as just the Moon Clan um, and the Spider Riders by them by themselves. And this, this orc army is kind of like using everything. As we go down later, you'll see there's more stuff from other destruction factions they're also using. Um... I love this uh, killer boss, and especially since uh, this guy looks like he's like your main simple um, captain character. He's your lord level character, your mm -hmm. general army leader, um, which I find it funny that they give you two of him, essentially, one mounted, one unmounted. <laughs> like, this box exists to sell you characters. Yeah. Like, most of this box I is characters. Um, I love the model. I hate that he's standing on a Stormcast. Is it just because you like Stormcast, or...? No, no, I hate it when they stand on these elevated positions. I, I hate it a lot. Um, yeah, um, it's definitely going to accentuate the problems with that axe, pickaxe, ice... That, 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 that ice climbing axe that he's using. Yeah. I don't think that'll pose so much of a problem. I just hate uh, the design of having them elevated like that. It's like, instead of a tactical rock which they always have, like, one leg up on a rock most of the time. Like, if you go back and look through most of these characters, and, and if you look through Age of Sigma, the catalogue online for most of the characters, you'll find most of them have, like, one leg on a rock. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, just to I'm make them look bigger than they are. I like the dynamic poses, but... Yeah, but... I can see if, you know, everyone has a dynamic pose that's exactly the same... Exactly, and I gotta run multiple multiple of this guy probably. And on top of that, I'm not fighting Stormcast. That ruins my immersion. Why is there a Stormcast corpse there? I'm fighting Daughters of Cain or Seraphon. Um, because he just the uh, it's the stab rots. The, the killer boss just drags him around because the uh, stab rot is actually just Russell Crowe. <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna have to paint that onto the base of one. But um. Um, I think these guys are pretty nice looking overall. I and, like it. Uh, uh, there was a couple of memes in the stream about uh, don't talk to me or my son ever again. <laughs> yeah. Up. Except that the one saying it is obviously the stab grot. Yeah. Uh, and then we got the uh, the Merc knob. Uh, I'm hoping this. I'm hoping that there are like Merc knobs coming eventually. Um, all orc armies need knobs. Um, with a Belcher banner. Remember what I was saying about banners earlier? Yep. Uh, protection against enemy magic, so probably a chance to cancel out magic and then flood the battlefield with choking swamp gas, so... Yeah. Uh, maybe something like lower armor? Uh, or... That could be just about anything. <laughs> but but um, I think the model's pretty nice. There's not much to say on this guy. Um, he's quite gruesome and gory, so he certainly gets across the, the Age of Sigma. I love the, the, 
mixture of robes and tatters. He has heads everywhere. Um, I like his weapon. Um, he's got this... He kind of accentuates this orc face. Uh, this new mutated orc um, face, which... Yeah, you're right, it does look very Lord of the Rings compared to traditional orc, but, you know. And I think he's the worst offender for that. These boys are too skinny. Yeah. Someone um, get them the protein shake. Then we got our man skewer bolt boys, so we got orcs with shooting everyone. <laughs> I actually kind of like these designs. I love them. I, I think the Lord of the Rings orc it's better with the shooting ones than with everyone else. For me, what sells me on these is the helmets. The helmets are definitely cool. The uh, visored helmets. Yeah, that the these helmets are the coolest shit. And if we go down to the next one, because I'm going to try and start rushing us through this because we're running uh, short on time. Um, okay. The gut rippers as well, uh, which are like your basic boys from what I can gather. Mm-hmm. Um, these are just your basic boys, um... They look pretty okay for the couple of the ones that do have helmets, so... I'm, yeah. I'm trying to really see just straight up Lord of the Rings on them. I really prefer the helmeted ones. Yeah. Um, and then real, real frackin' weird, and, uh, to, to those of you who believed the leaks about getting a hobgoblin army, it's not out of the question, but at the same time... Screw you all, you were wrong, and you should never believe those leaks, everyone. Um, <laughs> you have Hobgrot Slitters, so half goblin, half hobgoblin, I, I don't know. They've got grenades. <laughs> and yeah, they've got bombs and daggers. Uh, and these are um, like, uh, these are your chaff unit. Um, and they give you, they're kind enough to give you uh, 20 of these in the box at least, so you know. I definitely like the one with the uh, with the uh, hook hand the best. Yeah, I just noticed that there's one who's in a pose where he's uh, throwing in just like throwing the grenade, half letting go of it. And there's another one with two knives that is uh, challenge. <laughs> he's got his knife out, challenging someone. Yeah, no, those are definitely two pretty cool poses for them. I I like these things. They're weird. They're 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 the kind of weird that I like about Age of Sigma. There's something old that has been reimagined in a new way. Yeah. All right, now we're going to really dive into... I'm going to keep this brief because um, Haruka doesn't really know much about rules-wise of Age of Sigma except for what I've discussed with him. He knows enough to follow along. Um, and I've watched a couple of uh, uh, videos with you from Mini Wargaming. Yeah, and you've... Yeah. So... Then we've got this nice rule book, um, sweet giant. Um, the rules, the core rules, better still be available for free because that was the best thing about Age of Sigmar. It was a simple rule set that was only a few pages that you could download and carry around with you, nice and easy. And all the wall scrolls were also cool. So if you couldn't afford to buy the expensive books, the battle tomes, you could still play it with just the base rules and have a lot of fun. Um. Sure, gives a bunch of stuff. And now, this video, which I'm not going to play here, about their best rule set ever. Um, I disagree. The best rule set ever was Age of Sigmar 2.0. And as stubborn and as... I, I don't know. You can say, hit me with whatever insult you want. I think Age of Sigmar really doesn't need to change rules-wise in its core rules. Cleaned up a little bit. There's maybe three things I would change all in all. And they're extremely minor changes. But here we get things about, first off, they make a statement about one of the new things is about when you go second in a battle round, you get a command point. Um, cool. Uh, <laughs> as if they need more encouragement for you to go second. Um, unlike 40k, where you always want to go first so you can just wipe the guys off the field, which has become admittedly a thing with some shooting armies recently, um, and even then though... I still advocate, in Age of Sigma, you want to be going second. Because at going second, you can double turn, you can control the flow of the battle, um, your opponent is forced to either come closer to you, depending on their army, to try and reposition if you deploy correctly, 
or they're going to have to basically negate a whole turn of theirs, or they're going to have to waste on doing stuff, they might have to run onto objectives. Either way, you're forcing them to take the initiative, which is going to let you respond. And with Age of Sigmar's double turn tactics, where the initiative order of who's going first and around can change up, this is really important. And again, I don't like, I've discussed this in a previous video, I don't like the flood of command points and whole sorts of shit going everywhere, because 90% of 9th edition's codexes now is bookkeeping. Uh, the Admech Codex is the worst offender. It's just bookkeeping after bookkeeping after bookkeeping of abilities. It's like, no, 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 no. I don't want that. I don't want uh, command abilities flying everywhere. They're valuable and powerful because they are limited, and you have to think very smartly about when you're going to use them. Um, I don't like the mention of heroic actions, and this whole heroes need to be doing more with uh, more command abilities. Like, heroes already serve a vital function in keeping your armies working together. Like, armies are great, they have great units, but without your characters, they tend to have no synergies, which means they're not performing at peak. So characters are already important for fine-tuning these things, and a lot of armies... Like, they fill their character slots very quickly. Like, characters are amazingly important already. Why do you need more stuff? And if you're going to work these heroic actions, like actions from 40k, God, I hope you don't, um, now you're just making these very expensive characters useless for a turn. So I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant about that rules change. There's a bunch of other things that are also covered within this video. Um, the new narrative stuff for the new Path to Glory, love it. Crusade in, in 9th edition is probably the best thing to do. If they're taking cues from that, that's fine. Um, it's okay to, to, to take cues from each other. Age of Sigmar and 40k have always been changing and taking cues from each other. Every time there's a change in AOS, 40k does something similar. Every time 40k does something... AOS does something similar. The problem is, I don't want them to be too similar because 9th edition is bad. It's bad, everyone. It's, I don't care what you fucking say. It's terrible. Um, the codex, are tr it's as balanced as 40k will ever be, but it's gamified to an extent. It's just StarCraft on paper. It's just fucking terrible. I hate it. I thought you loved playing StarCraft, especially with the Doctor Lady. Shut up, you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... There, there's that about it. Um, but um, the the new format, none of this really concerns me. Um, I dislike some of these things, and it gives me a lot of hesitation because again, you're meddling. They're meddling with something that, in my opinion, doesn't need to be changed, and they haven't, you know, said they're addressing the things that do need to be changed. Um, the final thing was bonus monster damage in the charge phase. Um, monsters in Age of Sigma are. This is something that. It's a little odd, in my opinion. And this is what I'm going to just going to spend the rest of this video talking about for the remaining uh, two minutes, is Monsters in Age of Sigma are renowned for being terrible. There has not been a focus on them per se. And every edition of Warhammer Fantasy or Warhammer Age of Sigma has a focus on a different kind of unit to try and bring them up to being right for the rule set. In Age of Sigma 2.0, the emphasis was on... Hordes of infantry. In Warhammer Fantasy 8th edition, the emphasis was on wizards and magic. In Warhammer Fantasy 7th edition, the emphasis was on cavalry, because the rules made these things pretty well. So it's okay that they're shifting it to this new edition is going to focus a bit more on characters and monsters. The problem is, the weakness of monsters comes from the core rules, which is why Age of Sigma recently, over its many different books, has been working to improve monsters in various ways, aware of this weakness. So you have armies like the Flesh Eater Courts, um, who normally you would look at their monsters and you would go, ah, oh, okay, they're not going to make up their points back, they're 300 points apiece, I'll just kill them with a horde, They'll kill maybe half my horde, I'll still... They'll not make their points cost back, I'll still emerge victorious, because I can kill them with sheer weight of attacks, I can shoot them off the board. They don't have that many wounds, most monsters typically have a 4-up save, and little regeneration. Which is why a lot of the books and the battle tomes have taken it upon themselves in 2.0 to bring the monsters up. 
you have things like the Flesh Eater Quartz ones, which perform amazingly with crazy ridiculous buffs, that which let them kill 500-point models in a single round of attacks with some luck. You have different uh, monsters. Um, you have different ways of buffing the same monsters. If we look at the Soul Blight, the Avangori, giving monsters minus one to wound. Very cool, very powerful for ensuring the monsters get that bit more of longevity. Um, the monsters in various armies have all been improved greatly over time through their books. So rather than installing a core rule into the game to make monsters even better, you sh I think the design team should rather instead, you know, be aware that these things are not worth their points cost as they're statted, so they need to either lower them or bring up their rule set and their buffs and their bonuses that they can get inside their books like they have been doing. So I'm not really sure how I feel about that rules change. But that is all I'm going to blather on. This is everything that they revealed in the box. Well, not quite everything. Um, they did reveal some additional models coming afterwards, which, uh, Junko, your thoughts on these? Oh, sorry, I was listening to the boomer uh, yell at the fence again. But, uh, <laughs> no, uh, Night Indicator with the Griffhounds uh, looks pretty cool. Uh, Stormstrike Chariot, um, interesting. Just It's just, you know, they had to wait for the Griffhounds to grow up. Um, the funny thing is, like... uh, lore-wise, there are two different species of Griffhound. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, the chariot, uh, the chariot strikes me as a little weird um, when I look at its design of the chariot itself, but overall, I, mean, I, I like it. It's a bit small for them. A little bit, and they look like they're literally just hanging on, but, you know. Yeah. Um, the beast skewered kill bows, I mean, I like it, but that's just because it looks like they, the orcs MacGyvered up a ballista. Yeah. I, I love it. I, I probably want three. <laughs> You probably want three anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then we got the breaker balls on the Meyer Brute Trogoth, which, I mean, it's yep. an orc on a troll. Yep, orc on a troll. That's that's all I could say on that one. And apparently he's got... You know, it is, you know, out of all of these things, that Trogoth, they were very nice to him. They got him some back support because the stupid stick was going to be poking into, like, his lower back. <laughs> they put a little there. There's a, yeah, there's a pillow there. Uh, yeah, they, 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 the orcs were nice enough to do that. So maybe these orcs are nice, you know? Yeah, they just they just want you to get off their swamp. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it's just Shrek. Yeah, oh my god, it's just Shrek orcs. Okay, with that I'm just ending the video. Shrek orcs, everyone. And new Stormcast. I've been Jay from Jade Productions. I will see you next time.